How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to another video on this channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newest addition to Google's Wi-Fi lineup, the Google Nest Wi-Fi Pro. Kind of a mouthful, kind of not depending on how you look at it. But today we're going to be taking a look at all of the features the Google Nest Wi-Fi has to offer, the setup process, unboxing, and any other little goodies that come with it. Google boasts right on the side of the box that this device covers up to 2,200 square feet of your home. Show you that right there. In comparison, Eero with a single device only covers up to 1,500 square feet. So uh, right off the bat, Google has that advantage, apparently, of their device covering up to more square footage versus the Eero device. Let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed, shall we? So I already took off the saran wrap on it. We're gonna open it up almost smacked me in the face and here we go here is the product itself it is a shiny guy glossy white finish here on the back you have standard power you have your internet in and then your ethernet jack out so you'd have to plug it into a switch if you wanted more than one ethernet jack out let's see what else is in the box shall we I'm assuming probably just the power cable yep a nice big old brick go figure oh, there's, a, there's another thing in there it looks like an ethernet cable big old brick plugs into your wall and then there's a the charger plugs it in and then it also includes a network cable a trashy 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 slim network cable I do not like that in comparison to Eero they give you a nice real network cable I don't I don't like these thin cables they're usually garbage and that is it that is all that's inside the box here so let's go ahead and get the app downloaded and get it set up another thing to note about this product real quick is that this is the Wi-Fi 6 E model so this does support the latest and greatest Wi-Fi 6 technology alongside with the era Wi-Fi 6 plus model and the new ubiquity access points and all of that so this is on the latest and greatest Wi-Fi technology another thing to note right off the bat before we get set up is there is a little light right on the front of it here this is a blue light even though it looks yellow on the video it was initially first white so it does have two different colors that I'm aware of so far it is the blue and the white color blue I'm assuming that it means it's ready to set up so let's go ahead and get that going all right guys I got the Google home app downloaded which is required to set up this device immediately right off the bat you're gonna see that I have a couple old Google home devices from my old smart home that I had set up but I've changed it all over now to Apple home kit if you're interested in seeing a smart home video of from me please drop a comment down below saying yes I want to see a smart home video because I am so invested into my smart home I got a lot of different things going on here a lot of different uh, automation so if you're interested please drop a comment anyway right, let's go ahead and press the plus button right up top and that's gonna give us the setup device option here and we're gonna set up a new device it's gonna ask you what home you want it in and then make sure your Bluetooth is enabled because it's going to connect over Bluetooth to the Google Nest Pro Wi-Fi and it's looking for that device right now awesome it has found it and it's asking me would you like to set it up yes of course press next uh, now it wants to scan a QR code I didn't even see it but right there on the bottom of the device is the QR code so I'm gonna go ahead and scan that now struggling to scan this QR code guys my camera does not want to focus in on that QR code big struggles right off the bat iPhone 14 Pro Max can't even scan the QR code not like ring this is nothing like ring all right we're gonna skip that method and do continue without scanning and it's asking for the setup key it tells me nothing other than it's on the bottom of the device so I'm gonna guess it is this and now it's prompting me to join the Wi-Fi network that this device is broadcasting. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And now that it is connecting to Wi-Fi, let's see how long this takes. All right, guys. So now it's telling me on the app here to connect it to the internet port on the back here. And you want to make sure it is the internet port with the globe because this port is only out. It's not like Eero where you have in and out on both ports. So let's go ahead and press next on here saying that it's connected and there we go 
Looks like it's connected now. Now it's asking me to create a Wi-Fi name, so I'm going to call this YouTube Test Wi-Fi because that's what we're doing. And we're going to create a password. We're just going to make it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Next. And now it's asking us, would you like to be spied on to share usage? Sure, why not? Turn on Nest Wi-Fi Cloud Services. Sure, why not? Additional legal mumbo jumbo. We're just going to say this is in the kitchen. And now it's checking for an update. And now it's creating the Wi-Fi network. All right, guys. So now after it's done a little bit of setup here, it is prompting me to join the YouTube test Wi-Fi Wi-Fi network. So we're going to go ahead and join it. Let's see what happens. All right. It says it's connected after a few minutes later. Waiting for the final bits of setup to complete, so a little bit more waiting. And now it's asking me, do you have another Wi-Fi device to set up? So if you had a three pack of these, you would say yes, you do have another device to set up, but I have this single one, so I'm gonna press no. And now it's asking me to stay in the know. I do not want to subscribe to anything. Um, allow network access, allow. Maybe not, skip. Okay, now it's checking for update and it is restarting. So we'll be back after it has restarted. Just another thing to note guys, while this has been restarting, the white, <laughs> the light is now white and it is breathing in and out. So that means to me, it looks like that it's updating, it's restarting and we'll be back once it's complete. All right, so now it said that my Wi-Fi was up to date, your Wi-Fi is ready, it's showing me the information that I inputted to it, the Wi-Fi name, the password, and the location. So we're going to press continue. And now in the kitchen here, we have kitchen Wi-Fi. It says it's online and connected. And right off the bat, right at the bottom there, you can run a speed test. So we might as well. Let's see what is getting directly to the device. It's testing download speed. Now it's testing upload speed. All right, now it says internet test complete. And these are the current download and upload speeds directly to the device. I pay for a gig gigabit connection through AT&T, so that seems about right. So we're gonna go ahead and press done, and let's take a look at the settings, shall we? Very simple here, very simple right off the bat. More simpler than the Eero is by far. So we have device name, the home that it's in, the Google Home, uh, the placement, and then household, which shows me who is included in the house. You can also click on all of these options and change it. You cannot click on the, on the home to change it, but you can change the location. You can change the device name. It's showing me the Wi-Fi information, so the LAN IP and the WAN IP. And it also gives me the status light brightness. We can turn up and down the brightness of the little light on the device, which is neat. Now let's take a look at the network settings. So this is where you come to change your name or view your password if you need to. Family Wi-Fi, so this allows you to schedule a Wi-Fi pause. So if you have some kiddos in the house, you wanna cut the Wi-Fi off at a certain time, you can do that. Another option is you can group your devices. So let's say you wanted to block certain websites for certain users on your network. You could do that while keeping other users unattended. That's excellent. Let's keep on going. Guest network, you can just tick that on right here and it gives you an option for a network name, a password, and it also allows you to um, share devices on the network. So let's say you did have like a printer you wanted to share with the guests or a Sonos speaker. You could tick that on right down here and you would allow that for your guest user. Otherwise, it would be separated. So the guest network would be a completely separate network from the main Wi-Fi network that we already have set up. So preferred activities, let's check that out. So these are just activities that you do on a frequent basis. And the only option that's available here is video conferencing. So it would be, your internet would be optimized for video conferencing. Me personally, I wouldn't ever tick one of these on. It doesn't really make sense to me. Next one is the privacy settings. So you can turn on and off your Nest Wi-Fi cloud services and um, if your data and crash reports get sent to Google, so you can tick those on and off 
in the privacy settings, notification settings, so you can get notifications when you have a new device, um, you have when a new device joins the guest network, password mismatches, mismatches, and lost connection. So any of these you can get a little push notification for on your phone. Keep on going through. Let's take a look at the advanced settings. So it's asked, uh, right at the top, you can enable WPA3. Um, you can use uh, 160 megahertz channel for maximum performance on five gigahertz. UPnP, IPv6. You can change your DNS settings. Uh, you can change the WAN IP if needed. You can, you can change your LAN settings, so if you wanted to change the subnet that you have on here, you can absolutely do that. You can reserve IP addresses. It's taking a moment to load, but down here there's a little plus, and it's going to ask me for the unnamed device here, which is probably my phone, um, what IP would you want to reserve it to. Next thing here is port management. So if you can port forward off of this, if you uh, need to open up a couple ports, if you wanted to host like a little web server or maybe a video game server, whatever the case is, you can open up some ports here. And it's asking me to choose a device, which I guess I have no compatible devices. It can't port forward from my phone, obviously. So that's all I can show you on that. It looks pretty bare bones though. I'm assuming you'll just be able to open up ports, maybe um, a, a certain set of ports, so multiple ports there but we're not gonna worry about that too much. Let's keep on going. Device mode, um, you can change that to NAT or bridge mode. And that is it for the advanced settings. We're running low on options here, guys. You have your open source licenses, which is a bunch of nonsense. You can restart your network or you can factory reset your network from the bottom of the page here. And that is it. Granted, you can also restart and factory reset your network from the main device page here. All right, guys, it is time to do our first speed test on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I got this baby right in front of me here. So this is pretty much immediate contact and I'll do a couple more off video and show you the results here. So let's go ahead and start it. I am right next to it. We got 17 ping. Oh, there we go. Those are some good speeds. Almost 500 down. It's gonna hit it. Yep, there it goes. 500, 512 download speed with an upload of, oh my gosh, almost 700, 669. And this is it being right next to me. I'm gonna walk out of the room and do two more tests. One in my living room area, which is a room away, and then my master bedroom, which is two rooms away. So. I'll be right back. All right guys, so I'm showing my results on the screen here now. The first result that you're seeing, technically the second one, is in my living room, which is just one room away. Um, it cut about half, so it was 300-ish down and then 300-ish up, same ping, good result. The second result, or the third total one, was in my master bedroom, actually in the closet, which is the furthest point in my home here from the Google Nest router and frankly I wasn't super impressed. I had about 60 download and about less than 10 upload speed. For this thing theorize it says it covers 2200 square foot. My, my home here is way less than that. I'm at about 1200 and yeah it, 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 it connects. Don't get me wrong it connects all the way in the furthest room but even my, you know, my Wi-Fi 6 access point, my Wi-Fi 6 light access point from Unify um, takes, care of, takes care of me better than that. Um, and I would even uh, say that the Eero will do better than the Google Nest based on my readings here in my home. Your opinion may vary, your experience may vary completely just depending on the elements that are in your home, what type of walls you have, what are in those walls, you got a bunch of piping, you got a big uh, furnace in the way of the location where you're trying to do a speed test, there's many different variables, um, you have a lot of uh, interference, you know, all these different types of variables, but to me personally, 
My recommendation is still the Eero Wi-Fi 6 Plus model. Again, annotation above for you right now for you to check out that video. Compare the Google uh, Nest Wi-Fi here to the Eero. I think you'd be better off with the Eero, quite frankly. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are in need of any technical support, I do remote tech support, Wi-Fi consultations, all of that. Go ahead and visit my website, totaltechwnc.com. If you have a Unify setup, I can help you with that. If you're in the Asheville greater area, Asheville, North Carolina, I can assist you in person. So go ahead, feel free to visit that website. Link is in the description. Please give this video a thumbs up. Press the subscribe button if this video helped you at all. Have a great one.